Welcome back everyone, Todd here. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today's an exciting day around here. We just took delivery of the first of three mini bikes that we're buying for the grandkids. Now this one we had shipped directly to us and I'll be assembling it. I don't think there's going to be too much to it. The other two we're going to pick up at the dealership. They're uh, bigger bikes. There's more involved with them. And frankly, I can't really, I'm only giving up maybe a hundred plus dollars to have the dealership put them all together and uh, tune them up and all that. So that's the direction we'll be taking there. But tag along today and I'll show you the mini bike and what we have going. So let's go. There's the bike. It's a Trailmaster Storm 200. Really good reviews on it. Uh, quality bike. Certainly not one of the cheapest you can buy. But the research that I did on them and what have you, I have a lot of confidence in this. And I think that it's a big enough bike with the motor that the kids won't outgrow it. So you can see it comes in a pretty well-established crate there so i'm anxious to see how much is actually put together and how much i have to install but you know you can see it's a january day here in michigan we got a little bit of a thaw going today but let's get this door to the shop closed up and get some heat in here and unbox this thing i've taken the shop from 33 degrees up to 52 and uh, open up the box. So here's what's inside the box. You can see how it's packed. Looks, uh, looks like they did a heck of a job to protect it. I've watched unboxing of some of these Coleman bikes. Nothing against Coleman's if you have a Coleman. But they literally just come in a cardboard box. And that's a lot of weight. This thing weighs 130 pounds in the crate, I guess. And I believe the bike itself weighs 110 once it's assembled. So let's get the rest of the box off of there and see what we have. Once the box is off, that's what you're left with. Again, great job of protecting it. You'll recall when we did a walk around on the box it's in the beginning, I was a little bit concerned because the top of the box is somewhat buggered up. And as we all know, it's not uncommon in freight and storage to be having a company stack some of these things on top of one another and uh, obviously that's a nice stout metal frame so let's get the frame and the plastic off of this thing and see what we're left with here we are crate came off pretty simply uh you know, just a couple of thoughts. Each of these corners were tied in with a bolt and a nut, but it had a second nut on them. All four corners did, just to make sure that that didn't come loose in transit. I think that's pretty impressive. Every one of the reflectors has protective tape over it. The logo has protective tape over it or a film over it. Everything's tucked in there really well. Look at how this frame is bolted down to the crate underneath. Those still have to come off. I mean, they packaged this thing to make it to its destination safely without being all buggered up. And there's not a mark on this thing. And, you know, no offense to FedEx, but... This came on a, a box truck, a pretty good sized FedEx box truck. It weighs 130 pounds in transit. Here's the other thing. Here's your certificate of origination. Now, I bought it from BV Power Sports, but it's got all of my, you know, vehicle ID, et cetera, et cetera. Nice. I doubt if you're picking that up with the uh, $300 disposable Coleman that you're going to get at Walmart. 
Now, again, admittedly, I spent more money. I think this was 575 bucks delivered to me, which is great because I timed it on a, on a great closeout sale. This thing will sell for a lot more than that. So hopefully, and it doesn't look to me like I've gotten in over my head. I mean, it would appear to me at this point, all I have to do is put the handlebars on it. Now, something else that is actually good is that it does not come with oil in it. Perfect. I don't want any of that cheap Chinese oil that I have to drain out of it. So I don't have to drain anything out of it. I just have to put a quality 1040 uh, synthetic motor oil in the thing and run it. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited with the quality of what I'm seeing. I feel really good about my purchase at this stage of the game. Okay, I took off the packet that was strapped in the engine got a good owner's manual um, a very helpful uh, engine manual spark plug wrench some sort of a key and then the bolts that will go there to put the handlebars on and you know that's pretty much it so I guess I'll go ahead and unwrap this and put those handlebars on and come on back and show you what I got and there we have it unboxed put together I haven't taken any stickers off it sorry come around this back side here give you a little bit better look at this side yeah I mean it couldn't be easier to put it together gang really the only thing you had to do is to assemble the handlebars you just put those two bolts on everything else was already connected just take it out of the crate carefully cut all of the um strapped stuff out of it and there's all your owner's manual and stuff like that uh, a couple of wrenches to put that on i'm gonna let laura take all the stickers off it and uh so we still got to put oil in it still got to put gas in it and fire it up but for now, it's together. And uh, one thing I will mention is the tires were deflated quite a bit. I don't know that they were completely empty, but they were close to it. And I'm sure that that's because if they're putting these things on airplanes and whatnot, they don't want them to get up to altitude and explode or what have you. So and you saw the way they're created. Once they're in there, they're in there. So not a big deal. 24 pounds of pressure. Uh, front one's easy enough. Uh, back one. Kind of tough. I uh, could not get a air gauge on it, so I had to guesstimate that one. Uh, maybe I'll figure out how to get a, a gauge on it later, but for now, it's good enough. It's got air in it. So, all right, we'll be back with you when uh, once we get it ready to go, and I'm sure Laura will take it for a, a maiden run. So, be back at you in a little while. Okay. We've gotten to the point where it's time to put some fluids in this thing. So here's your gas tank. I like the fact that it has a chain on it for your cap. I'm holding in my hand what would be the fuel filter. And that drops right down in there. And it seats down in the bottom of the tank. So then you just fill that with gas. And there's your fuel filter right there. Couldn't be simpler. Here's your oil fill and that's your dipstick so I'll be uh, using my funnel with a tube on it and then I'm running synthetic oil so this is a full synthetic uh, motor oil 10w40 SAE that's what the dealer recommended um, I like it. Obviously, you're paying twice as much for a synthetic oil, but it's going to be worth it because these motors don't have a lot of protection. So every little bit you can give them is a good thing. This thing should take about a half a quart of oil. So I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in it and some gas and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got her all gassed up. Come down here, you can see 
The bottom one's the fuel. So we've got the fuel down here. This is the fuel. So the fuel's turned on. I'm going to go ahead and choke it. Uh, let's come up here. Here's your kill switch. You want to make sure, I guess, that's up. I assume you're pushing it back to kill it. No, I'm going to think that the little one is on. So we may have to play with that. If I got it the wrong direction, I could go read it. But All right, let's give this thing a crank. Goose it a couple of times. Okay, so I've left the bike idling for about two or three minutes, and it seems to be doing just fine. You know, it is like 33 degrees out here, and it started up second pull, no problem, which is great. It seems to be hanging in there. I may have to adjust that, the tension on the chain. I can see that jumping around quite a little bit. It's supposed to have between a half and three quarters of an inch of play in it, and that's real close to what it's got. I mean, three quarters of an inch is about what it's got. So I don't think I'll mess with it at this point. Idle seems to have picked up once it's warmed up a little bit. It's idling pretty smoothly now. So, There's the bike. And here comes my test pilot right here. Perfect timing. Huh? Here's Laura. She's going to do the maiden trip on it. She's all blacked out. That way nobody can see her. She gone. Here she comes on the way back. She's dark. <laughs> the black streak, I'm going to call her. Okay, we're back for our daylight trip. Laura took a run down the road last night after dark. She's ready to go for another ride today. Uh, it's been warming up, man, for two, three minutes. So go ahead, it's cold out. So who knows how this thing will run in the cold, but we'll find out. Go ahead, take off. She's just going to run it down there, come back. It's literally, it's literally only had about two minutes riding on it, so it clearly isn't broken in or anything, but... Going pretty good. Coming back. Feel like it's running good? Huh? Yes. It's not missing or anything. All right, we're going to do a little speed test. I'm going to have to give her my phone. It's got a phone app on it to try to get how fast it's going. Here it goes. Here 
Hope it doesn't get away from him. Not exactly Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, there you have it. A daytime test drive. Obviously, it's got to get broken in. It'll run better. We put the speedometer on it. It ran about, what was it, 20.3 miles an hour when Laura was running it. So it'll it'll come up from that once it breaks in, probably. But it's not made for be a speed, a speed demon, I guess. Any Any thoughts or final parting words? All right, and away we go. Might run better in cold and warm weather too.